Hey, welcome. Today's my favorite day. It's the longest day of the year and it's solstice. Uh, happy summer solstice to everybody out there and happy Father's Day as well. All's well in the world as we're uh, at this beautiful place. I call it my special place. And it's in Hotchkiss, Paonia, Colorado and big bees and we have the man. The myth, the legend. God, I love you, man. Brian Freeman, Greg Holland back, and Jeff Schwartz. Good to see you, man. Great to see you guys. Welcome back to Paonia, North Fork Valley, Big Bees. It's always a pleasure to have you guys, mm, especially delicious. on Solstice. Four years. This is our fourth year coming to visit mm. with you, and every year we get to watch you grow, watch this community grow, and the people around you. This isn't just a one thing. This isn't just Jeff Schwartz. This is other people collaborating with you. I mean, how do you even? Where do you even begin? How do you well, even start? We we started the segment. We started the, this evening with this mulberry, these big black mulberries, and I just think that the solstice is so special because these mulberries are typically that sweet. And the, 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 the air is calm and you know it's a long, mm -hmm. safe, big day. And there's, there's very few worries that I think, you know, rhythmically happen on Solstice. So we're cheers gonna, to Solstice. We're going to get a tour of the proper, property. We're going to get to talk to Jeff. If Brian and I are doing a lot of talking, then we're not doing our jobs. We want to hear from Jeff Schwartz because you've got a lot of stuff that you can talk about. You asked me earlier what Solstice meant to me. Forget about me. What does Solstice mean to you? Yeah. Honestly, I like what I just said, and I'd like to come back to that for a sec, but honestly, and Lil knows this, um, I, and I was saying this today a lot, my favorite part about Solstice, the longest day of the year, mm -hmm. is that tomorrow it's just a little <laughs> shorter. <laughs> and it keeps getting a little shorter, and we're over the hump, and we start to come now down, start, we have a lot of work ahead and a long mm -hmm. summer ahead, but we're not... We're not coming towards it anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, as a as a as an agrarian, as a as a as a farmer, um, and someone who works seasonally like that, I really appreciate the shortest days of the year the most. Why? Because of time off. Those are my favorite. Yeah, because time <laughs> off. But you <laughs> got to appreciate that perspective. I mean, is it that is a I shift don't. from in my head yeah. hey, to where it, what you just said. Thank you. Little That's joins a shift. in here. Well, would you I agree hope, with that? I hope more more people get that. Recap. What do you say? I was just saying I I love the shortest days of the year oh, right. more than the longest. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Well, because we have so much build up to this longest day of the year, right. and this is kind of just the beginning of our like longest days of our year. Right. And so it's. So. Yeah, it's the promise of. The quiet. Of we talked about <laughs> it. So how many months of the year can you farm this <clears throat> property? Our growing season, uh, you know, because most of the things we do are apple trees. Seven? Seven months? Yeah. Uh, well, our growing season pretty much starts in April. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October-ish. We do seven months, yeah. yeah. All right, so people are just tuning in now. It is solstice. It's the 20th of June. This is my favorite day of the year. I do like the light. Light and it signifies to me just growth and mm -hmm. light and mm -hmm. and beginnings and continuing on. I, that That's me. But describe this property. What do you do here, you guys? Hmm. Um, this is a good, you know, we're late in the day on this solstice and the sun is about to go down. You know, we've got a while because it's solstice, but I think, um, what we are seeing, you know, in terms of light and in terms of why this valley is so special is because it does, it catches that big, that big late sun in this bowl. And, and what we do here is we've taken full advantage of this particular spot and the way the sun hits on it and the way the soil has geologically been right here and the way the water is on this particular place and we've we've really seen that and, and and appreciated that and then we've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to be able to share it with as many people and that's the efficiency of our place you know and our model is the more people we can share this with um the easier our job is because um it just spreads do you, out. Do you think that's part of the, like, in, in some way, we were t we've were we been speaking to this today, glacial runoff right through here. You've got incredible minerals. Mm. How everyone is resonating and your farmland. And that kind of, what he just said, you don't ask a farmer, 
a well, question that was like that. That was goes the in. farmer's perspective. Yeah. And then I, that's when I want to bring Lil into the conversation. What do you do at Big Beef? We. What do you do? What do I do? What at don't Big you Beef? do? Oh, <laughs> I. Um, I hope to make this whole like this whole thing is the experience of agriculture in Western Colorado, and we've coupled that with retail, cafe, um, entertainment, and now camping. And so my role personally is just kind of um, getting the people in the right places to make that a, like creating that solid foundation of um, personnel and maintaining that so that we can present this and keep it in this comfortable space of anybody can come off the road and experience this place yeah. at its highest experience rather than um you know in the midst of a working farm which there's nothing wrong with that but by creating the uh the recreational experience mm -hmm. um you get you get to really reach there's anybody, a lot of movement. anybody who comes in yeah, yeah. a lot of movement. yeah Lil, i think yeah. lil's role is fun because she gets yeah. to be part of the visionary yeah and lil gets to be part of the nuts and bolts what well, we all do we're yeah. all executing i'm you know? just trying to get the setup of the property and here's what's cool because i like to have the perspective of the farmer and then you have this more marketing perspective mm -hmm. of how it ties in right people right seat mm -hmm. sit down well here's the thing sometimes you're in that so much it's like okay really what is this well here's an outside perspective of someone who just came into this property for the first time ever get jake's uh uh, microphone up here <laughs> when you came down and and there's there's just this magic about it but you felt it you were drawn in by the energy just take 30 seconds jake and talk about driving into big bees first of all uh microphone check good to go yeah it's my first time down here <laughs> i mean like a quick water commercial <laughs> since 96 <laughs> and you know hitchhiked all over the darn place thought i had been just about everywhere uh i haven't been here this is um it's mind-blowing <clears throat> It is fertile, uh, you know, the greenery is amazing to see, you know, this lush farmland in, in Colorado. Um, you know, I might never leave, so it's good, good, to, good to meet you guys. <laughs> we have a three week limit. Yeah. <laughs> we have to revisit our, our <laughs> arrangement. But it, it, this farm is an immersion experience. It, this farm is what, just, what I would classify yeah. that. Yeah. We like classify it, it as our experiential retail. We have a 30 acre retail outlet. And, and so that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're monetizing, you know, it, with respect, um, our landscape and our place. But this place is special because historically and geologically it's special. I believe spiritually it sits at the heart of this particular very special valley, the North Fork of the uh, of Gunnison River Valley. We've been doing a lot of biodynamic preparations for the last 10 years, pretty pretty, you know, uh, regularly. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to, we are seeing some serious vibration, a lot of fertility work, compost, <clears throat> cover cropping, all the stuff, no, no till just ripping, you know, feeding the soil, working now with microbes on a pretty significant level. And we're seeing real fertility and we're seeing real sustainability in that fertility where yeah. we know how it's easy to add just a little bit now that this, this, this system is underway. Yeah. And so that's exciting. And, and, and that same image of the system underway, and we just need to keep kind of, you know, rolling Well, you're it, taking such a long-term approach at it. We have. Right we're, now. We're, we're coming mean. into a sweet spot right now, all, all in. And even this retail thing, which is just booming, serving food and experience and music, like Lil said, and people really attaching to it right now and really connecting to it because we have figured out these we are further along in these systems and our maturity and it's really fun to be at this stage of development it's the seventh day of our road trip 21 days on the road the 1600 mile loop in colorado and it just shows you um the regions of colorado and how diverse the land is and how the agriculture changes so much and the seasonality of colorado is astonishing to see what farmers and ranchers can do with their land because it does change so much you know yeah. from the east to the west of colorado i want to take a break right now i want to show you all the things that we're talking about but we need to go to this courtyard and there's music that goes on here friday and saturday nights bands that come in a uh, marketplace that and a restaurant that to me is exactly what i want the sandwich that you have there that turkey blt it's 
that's my that's my jam. It's delicious every time. And uh, we want to share this property with you. So we'll take a break. We want to come back. You're going to see our partners who are local Colorado companies that are working very hard um, to bring you the best of the best. And we all believe in community and need to work together. So as we come back to Big B's in Hotchkiss, Paonia, Colorado, it's okay. it's Hotchkiss on, uh, when I see the map, but it's Paonia to me. Are we, where are we on the... We are Order a mile line. and a half from Paonia and yeah. like eight from Hotchkiss, but our postal address is Hotchkiss. Yeah. And our phone number is Paonia. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most crit. No, yeah, and you come dropping in and it is just such an experience. We're in love with it and we just want to share it with you. So we'll take that break. We'll come right back to Big B's with Jeff Schwartz and Lil right here in Paonia, Colorado. I don't see them. Do you see them? I don't see them. I don't know where the heck they are. At least we know they're in Colorado somewhere. Somewhere. I'm going to go find them. But in the meantime, let's go back into the chef's playground. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Colorado. Rich O'Brien here with Elevation Food Service Reps. Monica Leonard helping me out here. We just got back into the chef's playground. Uh, big supporters of the Modern Eater. We hope you guys are having a great time out on the road trip. I'm getting kind of excited to go see those guys. Oh, super excited. You know, the Modern Eater, we're super, super excited to be uh, supporters, sponsors. And boy, these guys are really doing a lot for the Colorado food service community and all of our restaurant tours, especially as we come out of COVID. Um, what we've got here is what we like to call our chef's playground here at Elevation Food Service Reps with all the brands that we represent, a lot of best in class brands. Yes. Um, and, and Monica has been real helpful in helping get a lot of these events set up for people to come in here. And we want you to feel very confident in coming in here to use some of our state-of-the-art equipment. So look us up at elevationfs.com or give yep. us a call over here at 303-750-3727 and uh, just let us know what you'd like to demo. Come see us. Good to yeah, so we, we are a Colorado family-owned business. We have our very own Colorado shelf. Hey there, barbecue all-star. This is your year, so what if you weren't drafted? The only draft you need to be worried about is actually spelled D-R-A-U-G-H-T, and it's adult for the word beer. It's barbecue season, baby. Now get out there and grill your ass off. minutes to where I was going to crack this open and take it home myself, but I decided I would stock you guys up for your road trip. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now back to the show. All right, Greg, well, it's a pleasure driving around with all everybody, and we're just gonna Good. go through the garden here. Jay's trying to get some footage of pumpkins and basil and tomatoes and chilies and melons, hot weather crops, great for the market, great for you pick, easy to grow. Grapes, raspberries. This is our little aspen grove with goji berries and elderberries, um, you know, and none of these things grow quick, by the way, folks. Uh, Apple trees, <laughs> uh, you know, really nice hedge trees, you know, aesthetic landscape material, old grapes. We've had a lot of grape damage this past fall. We had, uh, we have great fruit out here though. I'm so excited. We had a huge freeze in uh, October, late October. Right? Yeah. And it killed cherry trees and grapes. So we see more apple trees and honey crisp apples. Um, the diversity that we have in our little farm is really integral to our philosophy of permaculture and um, just diversification in, 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 in everything from crops to income stream, you know. Um, I'm grinning ear, ear to ear as I just want to learn things. I love to just sit and listen to you, Jeff. And as you walk through here, just keep describing, just yep. keep talking about how you built this and set it up. Just a lot of water. Yeah, and yeah. like we see our friend M here. Em is staying with us. Hi, Em. Hi, Em. For the next uh, five or six weeks, and Em's a writer and a gardener, and so she's going to contribute in her way and be here. And these are, and that's her tent, and that's her camp. Apricots made it. It's, an, it's incredible, but there's a, there's a small apricot crop out here. Our buddy James is, is, is staying here. He's helping us 
um, run the apple juice press and cook, so he needs a place for the summer. So being able to provide people places to stay, safe, healthy places for people to stay in this time of, of hard to find rent, affordable, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we feel like it's a good well, Jeff, and you, John of Gold you Apples, your yes, belief so go back to like the symbiosis of the planet and people and how you know they interact. I mean, that's so much of what I see from you all around. Yeah, I, I think we just have to, you know, this is we're coming upon real quick. I think that's a really good point, Brian, and I want to talk about it. This is some of the f most special area on the property. This is the beginning, this is the first. Hold up for one sec, Lil. This is the original house, the Bruce Estate, and it was built about 120 years ago. Um, and it was really one of the first orchard houses um, in the valley. And the 16 acres that our orchard currently and still sits on was always the traditional orchard. Because as you'll see, um, it's, it's, risen, it's rose above all the surrounding area, so it has the best soil. And it sits in this little high pocket and for traditionally and historically, our, they call it the million dollar breeze, every night comes down from I'm the east. I'm feeling it now. It's just starting to switch. And all day it came from the desert from the west and it blew up and it cools off and then it comes back down. And so this place has been an orchard and where you see orchards in this valley still is because they are good geographical places where they don't freeze in the spring. Spring freeze, that's our biggest issue water well, is an yeah. issue everyone wants to talk about and it's valid in farming fruit in the mountains like this you know spring freeze we're right on the edge of being able to be successful but as you can see these cottonwoods that jay just filmed a little bit you know we're always trying to be diverse and trying to combine both crops and wild plants and the pond for example it irrigates our our, our crops but it's also designed for you know uh, native species of plants and geese and we think that's very important to really try to incorporate as much wild energy into these farms. Well, this because it, it gives biosis it, of the, it the planet and the people yeah. that are trying to what what are we trying to get out of it? And if you if you give back to the planet the way good, that's the point you, I, you've done it right here. I love this. We're in the we're in the process of learning and and feeling it and be like, oh, look, feel it feels good. We're we're, we're, we're sharing and um, it reverberates. And then the more it does, the more it does. We're uh, chasing the sun right now. Chasing the, the sun, 85, 90 year old pear trees, red and green Bartlett's. They're so old that the red Bartlett pears are becoming green again from the roots, you know. Um, this, like I said, this is just a real precious, our most precious commodity, obviously this water. Yeah. And that's a really old irrigation, right? The farmer's ditch and it flows like that. It has for the last, we get from the beginning, 100 and so years, from April, mid-April through beginning of October, just like that. Yeah. And we, you know, and then from here we. we the concern is late. You know, that's what what you're saying. The freeze is in the beginning of the season. The and concern the, the, is that if Lake Mead drops below yeah. this certain number and they start calling water from Colorado, that's when the real concern. Mm. And that's when they say, "See ya, shut it down," because we're sending it all the way through for that oldest right. And that's wow. really what we're waiting to see, you know. That's what the drought. What's the temperature of that water? It's probably coming off the, not probably, it's coming off the river. So, I don't know, 60 degrees, Lil, 55? Probably. Go lay in it. Go lay I was in the <laughs> pond earlier today. Were you really? Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh, I floated around this that today for a second. Let's go by the pond, see where we store all this water. And then we'll keep looking at campsites. And so... When did you come across this property and how is it available to you? This, <laughs> we were running the juice plant down in Hotchkiss since 2000. And in 2005 or so, six, a guy who was working for me, I think his name was Jay actually. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey man, I just, I just got some, I have some money. And this property had been for sale for years really. And I said, he said, I said, I'd love to come look at it. This is a while back. And uh, he said, would you, would you take care of the fruit if I um, buy the property? I said, sure. And then I said, hey, because we were doing some retail at the time at the cider mill in Hotchkiss, way off the highway, you know, out of, and I said, I'd love to do the retail here as well. Mm -hmm. I'd love to rent that. And uh, anyway, long story short, he dropped out. We looked at this place. Bob Cokes and Maxine Cokes lived here and ran it. 
as the Coke's Fruit Ranch, and I had taken Dagan, my 18-year-old son here, to pick cherries when he was a baby, you pick. And um, my, fa my family, my brother Seth and dad, we said, let's buy this place. And Bob Coax helped us. He carried some of the note, and uh, we Look were able to put it Look at that sun setting over that. There it is, the last. Thing, guys, it's just the last little bit of that. You know, a lot of times when somebody calls a great football game or any kind of sporting and something fantastic happens, just to let it be quiet and let it happen around you. And I think that you experience that right now. Truly special. Where are we right now? We are sitting at the outlet of this of our pond, of our first pond, and uh, this little this is our little sub meditation pond and yoga pond, where I went swimming today. Did you dunk in this one? Yeah, nice. It was nice. You can do that. I've never dunked in this. Oh, one. not the little one. I dunked in the big one up there. This right? little one could be really nice. Jeff, you always give us great content. <laughs> Get in there. If I had a bathing suit, I would, I would sit in there. You have a bathing suit, huh? Uh -huh. I, yeah, I got. I floated around the the big one. It's so I mean, nice. I thought that's what you were talking about. Sorry. Was it was it yeah. nice and, re and uh, uh, refreshing? And there's little patches of cold Not and yet. hot, and you're just. And it was only the first six inches was the dip, different temperature. Yeah. If you went lower than that, it was a, a, its own temperature. It, I, I was loving it out there. I was I just like floating it. around. Yeah, it was great exercise. Yeah. So as the word's gotten out and folks are, you know, I believe, coming far and wide, what, who are some of the folks that you're, you're meeting that are coming through that some of the stories you're hearing from people? What is, what is this property Bill, who attract? Do you, who, yeah. I mean, what do you think about the people that come here? <laughs> what do you think, Lil? <laughs> come on, Lil. We, we have a lot of local tourists, mm -hmm. local tourists, you know, Colorado, um, Colorado, Texas, and California, those are our big ones. Um, I always think that because we are kind of between Aspen and Telluride, mm -hmm. that that's where people, you know, kind of come through here. But definitely since COVID, we've had more and more people like coming here. And I think that that, um, you know, the front range is really discovering it. Um, and yeah, I think we're kind of just establishing like a more regular yeah. client clientele than what we've had. Um, and that's that's cool to see. You know, we have people that book a campsite that live like over on the front range that book a campsite at least once a month that come out here. I know it's cool when you're in Denver, it's cool to like go camping and it's maybe an hour away or something like that. But I look for cool camp spots that just make me feel good. And I, I'll drive the four out. What is it, four hours, Brian? from Denver to here. Yeah, just about mm -hmm. four. four hours. But the, the nice thing is this time of year you can take McClure. Yeah. Check out the website. There's a website and I just Google uh, Big B's camping and it comes up. We have an RV. You can nice. get it right online. It's a nice show. That's good. The convenience of yeah. online it's and like online that. camping. Oh, totally. Yeah. Really where it's at. And really to camp Thank in a place you. that has a cafe and a bar. Yeah. Like, w why would you camp anywhere yeah, else? Yeah, super. <laughs> you know? Talk about that bar yeah. stuff. Too. So you guys, what, what do you, do you serve just cider here? Cider yeah. and local wine. And local wine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And your ciders are fantastic. Well, but it's, I, I Greg, in this area, you need to have the whole, it, it's immersion experience. Mm -hmm. Because you come here and for, I, I don't know, it's just, a, it's a magical place, but you get to see things growing yeah. mm -hmm. that you consume. Mm -hmm. You get, I mean, you get to be a part of it. You get to touch it, feel it. I was thinking about this when I'm floating in this pond today. I mean, in the, the fact that this water is like life for everything and it's giving me life mm -hmm. and how that it's. I, it's amazing, Jeff. Well, it's hard to explain the Little magic. And maybe guys. we're just, Brian, maybe you and I, are, we're, we're just tied up in the city all the time. Mm -hmm. and we have so much, so many frequencies going through us. 
But when we say this is truly just a magical place, it's hard to quantify whether the wellness is here or whether this attracts people that have wellness that come here. I just did a small bike ride through here this morning and there was a yoga retreat going on. There were folks that are... That's on the extreme level. Really? We don't always have the yoga retreats. We don't you don't? Yoga retreats. <laughs> I mean, no, but... That, yeah. I, think what, I think where people are connecting to yeah. is there's a lot of beauty. There's a lot of... Um, uh, <clears throat> the bar and the restaurant. And, and I think there's a level of uh, realism, you know, it's a farm mm -hmm. and there's a level of kind of freedom that we see the kids have their kids are riding their bikes from the campsite to the swing. And I sense in, in a lot of the families that I see walking around early in the morning or in the evening and the kids that they, they feel a lot of um, almost timelessness mm -hmm. and, um, and some fr and freedom. And um, I think that's, uh, we, for some reason, we've done a nice job in just kind of allowing that mm -hmm. to, to be. When you moved into the dome, what was around you? Was there anything going on? Did you have camping happening? Did you? No, when we took over, it was just the farm stand. And I was actually just telling Lil, um, there was a, we've been now here long enough that um, the peach, uh, there was a pe there were some old peach trees that were dying and there were some peaches on them and they were killer. And I was like, oh my God, what are we gonna do with all these peaches? And I was like, oh right, it's a you pick place. So I put the you pick sign out and people came and they picked the peaches. And that, I could just remember, I was telling Lil this and we, I would put the money in this little box, you know? And I was like, oh my God. I mean, we obviously had a big mortgage and stuff, but I, it felt like, it felt like free money and you know? I was like <laughs> people are coming and they're picking their fruit and they're super happy and they're giving us cash you know and um, I, I remember that being a real uh, launching point for um, just that just that that stream of, of passion you know of um, trying to create all this value that people can take and um, happily you know pay you for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, well, yeah right. oh I was just gonna say it's the the concept what he has created is is what everyone says i want to be a farmer mm -hmm. and this is like what would be what you think yeah. farming is what in your dream like this is it but i will tell you there's been <laughs> so much hard work and yeah this well, guy driving trucks in the middle of the night to make deliveries mm -hmm. setting up farmers markets i mean going from dinner and trying to be with friends to driving right from there to go to a market. And there was so much to get to this pinnacle, I think, but it was, I think it was because of his vision of the way you thought. I it never for a second, and again, it's not about me, but, but in terms of the work, you're right. We've been working for, at this project for 20 years, every, all, the, every, all the time, it yeah. doesn't stop. But it's never felt like work. I know that's cliche, but it's true for me. Um, does it get arduous sometimes? And, and ugh, of course, but am I, oh, for me, you know, because there was a lot done here, you know, from the land, from building it to drive to Denver to build big, and it was just life. And that's for me was the best part mm -hmm. because the kids were, my kids, Dagan and I were able to, to be with Tracy and I, and it was just, it was just constant life and family and work and food. And, and it was, uh, we, we were blessed because there was never separation. And that allowed, and especially when we moved here to the farm about eight, ten, uh, nine years ago or so, that's really when it settled down and yeah. just became life and not work. You'd think this was a, you know, a centennial farm that you've generations had worked to come to this point. That's just the coffee and then. <laughs> 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 it just speeds up time. <laughs> I love catching up with Jeff. All right, we're going to break. We're going to come right back and we'll continue on at Big B's right here in Paonia, Colorado. <laughs> Studio Kitchen here, guys, delivering some butter for your road trip. So what you doing in my parking lot? <laughs> so Sawaj is a uh, artisanal company that focuses on European-style butter and cheeses. Yes, so we have our 84% European-style butter, grass-fed butter. This one is 100% uh, grass-fed butter, uh, over 84% butter fat content, which means there's more butter fat, less water. Cooks better at higher temperatures, perfect for baking. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at the color of that. Mm-hmm. 
That's the first thing that, that our customers notice. What? This is a new release. We don't even have it out yet, Greg. This will be going to retail this weekend. Oh, look at that. Thanks again. <laughs> Absolutely. Martin. Man. Later. Thanks, guys. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms. And I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching the Modern Eater Show. Farm Box Foods, Farm Box Foods. We are a company who builds farms and shipping containers. So we make hydroponic and gourmet mushroom farms. Hey, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> yeah, do it, man. <laughs> You're doing good. I love this. We got, I just want the Jeff Schwartz show. We Let's got, you know, picnic areas and camping spots and glamping decks. And uh, when we get there, we'll show you our new bathhouse that we built. Two beautiful showers. And so wait, Jeff, those aren't your yurts. Those are just for other people setting those up? Those are our, yeah, those glamping tents are for renting out and we've put water stations throughout the orchard for people to fill. So we've really raised our game too. We've really upped our game. Um, these nectarines are really doing well, great. These, look at these townhomes. Got a God, great little gorgeous. duplex. Yeah. We call it the cabin. My mom and dad built it primarily for them. And when they're not here, we, we're, we're happy for people to use it. And uh, young apple trees. This is the, this is that. These are our young uh, peach trees here. I was here when they were. Yeah, planted. you sure were. They right look there. good, right? Yeah, during 420. That was fantastic. And yeah. again, that stuff that you're seeing right there. Check it out. It's available online for you to rent too, if it's available. Yep, and this is where those peaches were, where we first started. Right, we're planting back in it. And this is some more camping, peach land camping. People get a kick out of it. You know why? Because it's not very expensive. And they've got a picnic table and a fire and a little bit of orchard. And uh, you can tie a hammock scenery, up. Brother, is and again, gorgeous, you're free right? to be yeah, you and me. I'll tell you, yeah. What, how, how, can you, how can you build on this? Is it, what's in your mind? We're going down. We're going to build. You, Lilia, let's go down and... and uh, do you want to get some campers? Do you want to like? Sure. Sorry, let's stick to plan. <laughs> Sorry, Lil. I'm, this, I'm, we just wanted I'm, to race, Lil. I'm trying to direct. Come on, race. <laughs> this is the mind of a dreamer. This is how it works, and I love it, Jeff. I love. How are you guys? You are, man. Um, because this is this a guy like you creates a vision like this and makes it all happen. That only created. I just kind of like. Keep Continued kicking things off and then just like yeah. keep like, yeah. this is our orchard camping. We call it welcome to orchard camping here. And there's about 12 or 14 sites. And uh, people are really high. A lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot of fucking people. Yeah, here. it is. And um, look, it's great revenue for the farm. You're hearing about this happening. Farm, uh, farm camping experiences. And we've put together, you know, Lil and I came out here this early spring and really dialed up. To <laughs> now, <laughs> this land is really important. Do you feel that people come in here and respect your property? Yes, very much so. Uh, we have some, you know, but the, the trees are very resilient. The land is resilient. It's a good challenge for us. We have to provide enough energy to this place to withstand a lot more impact than a standard organic orchard, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so we're doing our best. Um, we try not to stress about it. Well, and um, you're lucky because you know where all this fruit is going and you know the production. Oh, thing. yeah, yeah. We could, this 15 acres of fruit, this is all, these are all Fujis and Galas and Rome apples. Bob Koch had, Koch had planted all this. Here's our tail water. This is the end of the water that we saw, Jay. Right here, that's where it leaves the property. And goes um, back into the river or what? Goes back into the river. We're fortunate yep. to be able to send it back into the river. These are John of Gold apples that we planted a few years ago. They've been wonderful. Probably our most productive crop that, uh, block that we planted ourselves. Goldens and pink ladies. See all these roads, we flattened them out. You know, We did all this infrastructure work this spring so we can get RVs through all this and there's very little hassle and people getting stuck. That was a big deal. 
Was it? Oh, every week we have to pull someone out, and it was not their fault. It was our fault because we invited them in you know, on like six foot road. I love how you look at that, Jeff, where you just own it. And you're just like, hey, man, I brought you here. If you get stuck, let me help you. Lil and I really work a lot on, 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 on responsibility because we're, we're so responsible to so many people, really, that um, we have to take first and foremost, it's our own. Very few people, Jeff, in life approach it that way anymore where they take responsibility for what's going on around Look them. Look at this. We got our wood. Yeah, bro, totally. But it's working. We got our wood lot because now people have so many campfires. So we have a wood lot. <laughs> like and these days, that's more valuable than you know. <laughs> know. We just sell the wood and the water. If you were to look into a crystal ball, what would you see this 10 years from now? Jay, I'm going to go in here and open this uh, door so you can see the kids skate pipe. This. Are they skating we're, I now? Think we're going to be good. I am. We're just going to circle back home in a bit. Ooh, it's, that was a nice warm breeze. That was wonderful. Was it? Nobody's, nobody's skating. I don't even think you can see in there, but the kids themselves are all the kids around here built this beautiful little half pipe. It's like a four foot drop by like a nine foot run. Or no, more, 15 foot run. And these kids are ripping. <laughs> We saw some video from it. We put it actually on the air the other night. It's, yeah, now this they, is a great. What's cool about it is they were terrified of it. And <laughs> now they're doing it. And now when they're going to these skate parks, normal ones, they're all just like skating in slow motion. Oh, really? Because, like, yeah, the transitions are proper. Yeah. These are like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lily, are you going to take us down the hill? I love it. Not only is it Farmer, he's talking about transition on his half pipe. Uh, you know. <laughs> Out that way, <laughs> towards the pond, to the frisbee golf. She course. got it. <laughs> em, do you want to jump on? Yeah. What do you think of that ten-year question? You don't like it? No, I love that question. I think that um, I'll still be here doing uh, the things that I love to do here. Today was the first farmers market that I didn't really. I'm, no, I'm transitioning out of certain things. Mm -hmm. Farmers market. That's a big one. That's a high energy one. These kids can do it. They've been doing it their whole lives. Isn't it wild how much energy it takes? People don't realize the, the yes. amount of emotional energy. I don't do any is. selling at farmer's markets anymore, and I'm adamant about it this year. I can't do it. I can't stand out front. This is actually where we are parked, or where we are parked. There it is. Last night. Sun seat. Saturday right? night. Just popping. The music was playing. The sun was going down. Just a community of people coming together. But now here's something new that I haven't seen. The addition this year is this piece of land right over here. You've got a friend or a partner that you've yeah. brought onto the property. Talk so, about so that. So we just drove, yeah, you're right. We went through the inner field camping into the new property. This is the our, another 15 acres to our west. And it's our next project of development. It's going to be our music venue, our bigger music venue, our big parking lot. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. First and foremost, it's a Frisbee disc. And disc golf. <laughs> we have a disc golf course that is just in, and we're going to start making it more creative and this is the pond so the whole the whole design starts from from this big one acre surface area pond that um we're in the process of designing and digging and uh, we're, we're we're filling it with water now and it's holding good water and this pond is going to be really um it's going to be important it's uh to be able to store a lot of water is invaluable well it's a nucleus for you to be able to put in more trees right? and it's and it, it is it, it'll be another central point of, of an oasis really of deep good water for storage and for recreation and camping and 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 shade trees and you know a food forest um, there's a food forest actually going in in conjunction with federal mo government money and and ditch project uh, 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 wetlands restoration right just on the other side of this little fence so we're really designing a big 30 acre food forest and um, I think appropriate recreation uh, space and all that and that's that land down there Jeff is between you and the river right yeah and they're using that 15 acre basically wetland to re restore it into healthy native species shrub forbs grasses 
Um, so stuff that really can, uh, and it, it's wow. going to be perfect because it's sitting on a water table. And um, are we too dry for fern and things like that back in that wetland, or is that? I don't know. Fern, Lil, is fern a native? Do you know? No. Colder. Let's go out and up the hill and head home on the wide loop. And we'll go by Winds and Amber's Nursery, the Oasis Nursery, a permaculture base style native plant nursery that we're so, so happy to be collaborating with. Um, it's a perfect space. It's a perfect teaming up of, of space and effort. Well, I bet people, the locals love a nursery because you don't, I mean, indigenous plant nurseries have become mm. a, a big oh, cool. thing. And so uh, it's nice I to love be able to go that. buy aspen trees and fruit trees and elderberry shrubs. And Wind is a big nursery grower at his farm. And, and if you remember last year, you guys were here, that was just a big boggy wetlands. And Dagan and I took a track hoe and just started digging that, digging at it. Remember that? Yeah. That was oh, yeah. gnarly. And we just started hammering on it and eventually <laughs> built a road. Sometimes you're like, take a bobcat from like the pond, like this summer, like this spring, I was like bobcatting some buckets, like doing a lot of, and I'd be like driving a bobcat worth of gravel, like somewhere, and I felt like a crazy man. You know, like the, the dude is like digging something, like one bucket at a time, but he can't stop. I was like, fuck, am I that guy? Well, and those are like those <laughs> week long projects that you're like, what did I just get started on? Oh, I know, it's and crazy. And you can't give up on them. You're just like spinning on it. But isn't that somewhat like meditation sometimes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you, getting on that hard. tractor and working it for a little mm -hmm. while. It's just... It's wonderful. This, Yeah, this this has become, you know, in this design, this new, basically this new development, this is the parking. This is our festival and, and, and main parking lot. And we could park, you know. Festivals? What kind of festivals are you going to do? We do a lot. Every Friday night we do live music, and it's a whole festival vibe and a whole festival uh, feeling. And we park 200, 300 cars and... Uh, yeah, you can see this, the beautiful nursery that these guys, year one, I mean, they just did a phenomenal job. Actually, so remember, Greg, we met him mm -hmm. at breakfast. Yeah, today. we did. He Wind, was, right? Yeah. Yes. Great, great grower, great permaculturalist, did great he friend. Did he approach you or was this? We approached each other. It was just one of those things yeah. where he, it just happened. Look and at that. Worked That's out great. Beautiful. The beautiful. beginning of such great stories. <sighs> So does, does wind live there? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we, that's just the shop. That's just the storefront. <laughs> yes, wind lives there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, wind. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. These are going to be two waterfalls that we're going to landscape in. Oh so this will be our new entrance because we're moving our driveway back up this way. So this will be the main entrance next year. This will be all entryway, archway. Two big waterfalls here uh, as our main... Oh, so you're pushing parking away from the front of the store. We're closing this off, and we're entering the new pro the property from there from now on, and we'll be coming up to park here. But we'll be coming through the grand, if you will, entrance. Nice. The swings are a nice. hit. The swings are a big hit. Constant we thank Jeffrey change. Tree Jeff, Guy for that. I love that. it. And you, you, the evolution of what has this property has become, you know. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. I just come full circle. This is what you see when you come in. Why did we have the cones here all weekend? Oh, my God. That's like the classic, you know? Yeah. Like all weekend, we've had like a million people here, and they see our, our, our garbage work cones. It's, it's unbelievable. Come back to Big B's. Just a second.
Gold Crest. Yes! <laughs> Scott Jones, my friends, what's happening? Yep. Do you mind if I dig yeah, in? Dig in. Let's dig in. Right. Woo, boy! I know this. Let's start with this, though, because this is on my breakfast table all the time. Yep, got the staples here. You got to have eggs. You got to have milk. This is the best bacon right here ever. The Polidori family is playing this with Carrizo, heavy cream for the chef, right? Oh Natalie's strawberry lemonade, a legendary chocolate milk. I'll tell you what. Here we go. Well, welcome back, guys. So we're back to our, our, the nucleus of the whole thing, the core, you know, our retail outlet where all the food and all of the fruit and everything gets sold and offered. So let's go in. These guys just closed up after a huge monster three-day weekend. They're so happy to be out of here, but we turned the lights back on and we've got Lilia as at the bar. So we'll go grab ciders, kombucha for Jay. Uh, anything else you guys want? We're walking through the well, courtyard. Jeff, this is your interface. This is where the yeah. average person that doesn't want to go pick, doesn't want to go engage, you yeah. can come right here and oh, just yeah, pick yeah. up a yep. sandwich, pick this up a it. drink. Yeah, we're You've got an ice here, cream yeah. in here. Yeah, we do. We have third bowl ice cream from it's Crest. It's a place good to chill of ours. out. And I was looking at these lavender. Lavenders. By the way, come and buy one of these. These are these gorgeous. Are just, yeah. From Palisade, our good oh. friend Paola. Oh. She's a great lavender and cherry grower, um, although the cherry crop froze. But yeah, we have pr local produce from our friends. We carry our obviously our juices and our jams and our jellies and honeys from local beekeepers and our eggs. And this is what most people know Big B's all about is the juices and then the ciders. And when you're in Denver, you see this on the shelves and you go, okay, well, this has to be a place. Well, this is the place. This is what you're looking at right now. You are at Big B's and they are just shut down. I can tell the floor is freshly mopped and Jeff, nice. you opened it up to us. Thank you so much. This is my happy spot and I wanted to end where we began and that's just full circle and that's your philosophy of uh, doing yeah. uh, regenerative farming. Yeah. 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 Should we end up having a yeah. have well, let's have for us? Let's go out nice, to, the, uh, to our bar, which really glass of cider. signifies a lot about what we're doing. Yeah, the third bowl ice cream, our friends from Crested Butte, making all real ingredient, all uh, fresh dairy, uh, incredible ice cream makers out of Crested Butte. They've moved to Hotchkiss recently. Dear, dear friends. I love how you let little this people was a good, come in. This collaboration, with you that know? collaboration. And this has always been our cider bar here. Um, and we try to keep a bunch of special Sean Larson. We try to let him just keep fun ciders. And, and, and you guys met Sean. Did you go to Sean's today? And we today? went to Chrysalis today. So Sean's a great time, fermenter. He's been winning awards with you for yep. your cider. Yep. And started his own brewery over there. Bring it on through. And Lil is serving ciders. What do you guys want? Whatever. Thanks for showing us around. We're going to go have dinner right now. We've smoked a couple of chickens. We're going to have some tacos. Should we grab ciders yeah. and go get yes. and go Let's back grab a feast? Ciders. Yep. Anything special? I love, you know, I love your cherry days, right? It's the cherry. Uh, what is on drink tap, drink. Lil? Yeah. We have the. Um... Oh, grab. Grab a microphone here. Here we go. All right, we got our, our four main flavors. The Lazy Days, Cherry Days, Harvest Apple, Orchard Original. We have a watermelon cider. Oh, get uh, out of town. It's mine. That's the fine. California, <laughs> which is a Gravenstein single variety. One Night Fruit Stand and a Citrus Punch. Um, seltzer. Faucet. Seltzer. Oh, yep. that's right. Your new seltzer. Our new seltzer. There you have it. So Look. all these ciders are different, and there's discre they're dry and sweet and different flavors, and Sean does yeah. just a great from sours. And um, the California has been my favorite. It's, it's, a, it's a Gravenstein, like Lil said, single variety apple out of California with traditional cider apple early. Yeah. We love pressing it, and uh, it's making it for a great, exquisite, I think it's like a <coughs> French-style cider. Done. I like it. California for me. Wow. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, buddy. Thanks, Lil. Ah, you bet. Just wonderful. It should be a nice dinner tonight. You guys rock. All right. 
We're going to call you. quits. Yeah, happy Father's Thanks, Day. Thanks, bro. Happy Solstice, and thank you guys for tuning California. in every single Please. year. This is the fourth annual uh, Solstice at Big B's. We'll be back year five, and why not? Because it's the best of the best. It's a kind of our secret, but we want to share it with you, and uh, it's my happy place. Come, come enjoy it yourself. Thanks again. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to go have dinner. The Modern Eater Show. We'll be in Telluride tomorrow. Tune in then. Kick the rock down the road. <laughs>